back to another Era Queen Caledron video. We are excited. This is going to be a different video for us. I'm Atar. I'm Estenes. And we are excited about 3D printing this time. We're going to pick up on a Kickstarter from a friend of mine who lives in Ontario, Canada, Mark Chabot from, from RM3D Studios. And he happens to live close enough that we can go visit him. So for this video, what we are going to do is talk a little bit about 3D printing of terrain that actually can be a lot of a time saver and still really good quality. He's got a fantastic Kickstarter going on right now. It's really exciting. It's getting good support and sweet looking designs. We are really keen to get some of these designs. So I backed it. We're, I mean, walking our talk. We think this is worth backing. We're going to do two videos. And in this first video, we're about to leave and interview Mark. Yeah. And give you a bit of his background and uh, how he got into this and how you can follow his lead and get into it through his Kickstarter, get into 3D printing of terrain yourself. So you want to tell us what's in the two videos? Uh, the first part is going to be Mark's actual history, how he got into 3D printing, what type of printers he prefers, what type of PLA, which is not resin. Not resin. You'll but, learn that in a minute. Um, what type of PLA he prefers, where he gets it, uh, how much it costs to produce his different terrain. Um, if you were going to do this yourself, what are some costs you could expect? Yeah. Um, actually, that's touched on in the second video as well. Um, and then we just get a little bit of a look at of his development of some of his uh, terrain. And we get a look at like all the different stages and from square one all the way up to what it is now. And what do you paint? How much work is it? And how do you do this in a way that's smart? Because some 3D printing is actually quite a lot of work. And when it comes off the printer, you really have to fix it before you can yep. use it. And Not with Mark. He's kind of yep. gone through all that. He's trailblazed a bit, so we can do this the easy way. So this video will show you that. In the second part, uh, we're actually going to take a look at one of Mark's printers. Um, one of the ones that he's very happy with and he does most of his printing on. Um, He'll He's tried a bunch through. of things, so he'll, hopefully this will save yep. you. If you're thinking about 3D printing, this should save you a lot of time. And if you're excited about his Kickstarter, but you're hesitant, that you know, maybe 3D printing might be a bit of a stretch, you're not sure where to start, these two videos should show you enough that you should be as confident as we are it's worth doing. And it will save you time and money and be good quality and you'll love it. And then the second video caps off with a quick review of the Kickstarter so far. Yeah, there's some cool stuff there. Let's take you to Mark Chabot's studio at RM3D and we'll show you some of the exciting stuff that he's been working on. I am standing in the middle of the RM Studio Genius Lab where this genius has been making all kinds of incredible things and we're having some fun. So I'm, I'm just here to learn and to ask you some questions right. and to see what you do. We know only enough about 3D printing to cause trouble. So I know that when my son goes to the library, we can yep. go on the internet on Thingiverse or other websites yep. and we can download free files. And they're, some of them are really impressive, some of them are really not. And we print stuff and it's fun. Yep. We glue it together and cut it all up and change it. Some of them are, uh, they need a lot of work when they come off the printer, you gotta sand them down and clean them up. Others seem to be really good. So maybe just for starters, sure. how did you get interested in this stuff? How did you find any of this? So long story short, um, I've always loved modeling. Love terrain, love painting, love all those things, but they take a lot of time. Um, so I had family, kind of came up here and realized I don't have 20 hours to build a house anymore. So I looked for what's the solution. I went to um, like a styrofoam cutter, and you can use that to pre make blocks instead of doing yeah, it all yeah. by hand. Um, but still, lots lot and of lots time. of time. Um, so instead of time, I found out that you can 3D print things. And then sort of like you said, Thingiverse was kind of hit or miss. You get some good files, you don't get some good files, but then what happens when there's something that you really want? Yeah. So I really wanted some ruins to go with the new launch of the new Lord of the Rings because it just made sense. Osgiliath is always one of those things that comes to mind when I see yeah. like an amazing game table, lots of cover, lots of scatter, lots of everything, and it just didn't exist. So I knew something needed to be done. And there's lots of other opportunities, not as Gilead and Dale and Moria, yep. and it just goes on and on. Arnor, yep. or anything in Arnor. This is beautiful for Arnor with a bit of snow on it. So sometimes you put some snow on it, sometimes you put some plants on it, you put some, some yep. brush on it, but any of the other modeling techniques we would use in other areas, you totally could use and those There's areas. so many different ways to paint it. Like you said, lots of people just go with the standard kind of gray with a little bit of dry brush. And yep. It looks great, yep. but there's so many different ways. You can do like a sandstone ruin, you can do, like mine's a little bit of off, it's kind of like a taupe kind of color. It's a nice mix. And yeah, you could, there's just so many different opportunities that you can do. So we're going to take a look at the printers, 
We're going to talk about sure. which printers you use and why. Yep. We're going to talk about some of the things that you have done and, and learned not to do or learned to do and just sort of how do you get started because sure, people, yeah. people in this Kickstarter are going to benefit from all the work you've done. Yep. They're going to get a stack of STL files and they can print all those things. Right. And they'll have a jump off point. Right. Yep. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you paint them um, because goofballs like me have to learn how to make them look like this. So Super this easy. Amazing, amazing. Super easy. Stuff. Painted it in a week. The which, whole set. Which is crazy. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. Um, so let's take a look at some samples here. Sure. Let's start. Let's start with a printer because that's that's kind of the starting point, right? Sure, you need yeah. to figure out what kind of printers do you use. Why do you use that one instead of some other one? Yep. So a lot of people are scared of how expensive the printers are. So we should talk okay, about yeah. where you get a good price for a printer. Sure. Yep. So tell us what printer do you like? Okay. So I've got a pair of printers that I've used. I've got something called an Ender Three, which is made by Creality. Um, a lot of people use them for miniature printing now. Oh wow. Because they don't have a lot of uh, shaking in it. So a lot of moving parts, a lot of pieces moving, and of course it creates a little bit of motion. You can get echoes in prints, and the Ender 3 doesn't really have that. Interesting. So what's an echo in a print? So what's an e it's like a wavy line. Okay. So it's like feedback. It's the yeah. best way to explain it. So when the printer... You can actually see the wave yeah, in the model. You can see it if you've got one of the, the printers like that. It's from the speed. Okay. So when okay. a printer prints across, it needs to stop where you tell it to stop, yep. and then it needs to go the other way. Yep. But when it stops, the whole machine has to show, stop, and sometimes it shakes. Okay. Right? So it's it's called an echo in it, right? Um, so the Ender 3, a lot of people are using it right now for miniatures um, and for smaller pieces, like really fine detail. Yeah, yeah. So you'll Some see it. Statues. You'll see Some it exactly on my statues. The statues are the ones that I use the yeah. Ender 3 for. Actually, almost every piece on this table I use the Ender 3 for because it is just a workhorse and reliable, and you don't have to do anything to it out of the box. Okay, it so just comes it, ready. It comes it. ready to go. Um, it's got a build plate that's about uh, about 22 centimeters by about 22 centimeters. So it's right in the middle. It's okay. bigger than it's some of the size. Yeah, it's bigger than some of the older printers that came out, um, but smaller than some of the other printers. Okay. So for some really big pieces, so like this piece like right this. here, the base, I like my scenery to be all one piece. I don't like um, when you have to clip them together. Right. So right. I've got the CR10 for these pieces. Just because it's a little bigger? And I print things bigger than normal. Okay. <laughs> I really like my scenery to be big and impactful on yeah. the table. So like the arches, it's I print almost double the... Exciting. When you, yeah, you yeah. put a couple of models onto the table and you can just see how big the spaces are on these, on these pieces of terrain. You can fit all kinds of stuff around here. So like the arches, I print almost double the height of a normal man. Okay. So instead of one and a half times, which is kind of the normal architectural yep. kind of size, I like things bigger. Well, <laughs> and if you talk about you know weapons and war gear that a lot of these models will come with, this guy's got his spear sticking up in the air and he fits. Yeah. So things like that matter. Yeah. It's a whole lot easier to play. One of the things we've discovered, we play in, in a Hobbit League in Ontario. Yep. Right now we've got yeah, I even mentioned you guys on all my stuff. Yeah, now. thank you. I mean, my Kickstarter put a special thank you out here, there. Um, well, and it's a lot of fun when you can do this with other people. But yeah. one of the things that we found really quickly is that some of the most beautiful looking terrain, this stuff is great, and it's the right balance, but some of the most beautiful looking terrain is really not easy to play on. No, it's Because not. people don't necessarily think about how you play on it. Little things like this, the guy's spear fits in the door. Um, that kind of stuff matters, and when you're playing in an actual tournament environment, it gets really tricky to make beautiful, exciting stuff yeah. that is usable. So this is a really nice mix that's in between. And the way that the way that it achieves that, you've got steps that are sort of a reasonable length, so that the moved the turn length for this yeah. model to get that's up the steps <laughs> is reasonable. You can actually get up the steps in a turn. You can fit through the doors. You can't fit a horse through these doors. You'd have to go through different doors with a cavalry yeah. model. Um, and then some of these other pieces of terrain, you can see some of the archways over here. Yeah, you put a lot of thought into the dimensions on the designs here. That's also the other really amazing part about 3D printing, is that if you do have an archway that you like, but you wanted your cap to fit through it, you, you, can, just, scale it. you can just scale it. So you could print it to fit any model you really wanted to through the doorway. Well, and one of the big benefits of this Kickstarter is that you're giving people files they can do with it. Lots and lots of files. <laughs> and, so the, and the deal with the Kickstarter is it's not for resale unless you buy the special package for that. Yep. But when you have the files, you can you can twist them around and do what you like with them. Those uh, The commercial licenses that you're talking about, they're already gone. Yeah. They're gone. Oh, the, wow. There was 15. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. There was 15 of them for people all around the world. Uh, they sold in the first three days. Very so good. They're, they're gone. So Very good. Everything that's left is for home use only. But that's also being said, you can print for your friends and for your clubs too. Sure. So. It's just not for profit. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so maybe let's take a quick look at a printer. Or let's take a look sure. at some samples. Now we're going to cut this video and put it back together a couple of times so sure. we don't drag you around. While yeah, and you know what? Even if I've got some of the different things where I started out, so you can see let's some of that. the progress of kind of the original design, what we thought was going to be great, 
and some of the tweaks that we have. I saved yeah, the first yeah. prints that I did. We'll save some of our learning because he can teach us and we'll skip some steps for you. So, okay. okay, let's take a look. Hey, thank you. Um, I've set this up so you guys could see kind of some of the process that we went through um, starting out at the very beginning. The very beginning we actually started with this piece right here. It was a design of, oh sorry I kind of moved it off the screen there. It was a design of scatter and that was the size we kind of started at. It's got not enough polygons in it though. So when you really take a really close look, the statue on it doesn't really have a lot of the features and the designs that I really wanted there. Also the brickwork doesn't have sort of the designs that I wanted there. It needed to be functional, it needed to be bigger than that, and it yeah. also needed to look a lot nicer than in that. In terms of texture. texture yeah. And, yeah. In terms of textures, of details, and well, you can see in the next one actually. Well, so yeah, let's do that. Where we move over, here's your next step. So here's step two, this is a green one, um, so that you could see it a little bit better, but you can see some of the changes pretty close. But there's some so here's the rocks you can pretty see big flaws well. you can it. see that the texture in there is a little bit it's definitely a better texture than this is that's really interesting yeah and the statue too the statue's got a few more details in it like in the cloak part around the face and around the face the face is still kind of washed which is not what i wanted in a piece of scenery and also um, when you tilt it forward you can see there's holes in the bottom so when it was designed it wasn't designed the way that i wanted you can't yeah. put something with holes on your board so that was kind of step two, and then step three, da, when da, da. we played with it and we got it all done, we've got the base thickened up so that the, there's no holes through the bottom of it, and we got the details cleaned up. So you Did can you, see this it. whole thing is printed, eh? Whole thing's printed. Um, the reason why I it's thought you actually put that on a base, but that just came off the printer. That looks great. Yeah, that was actually the reason it's designed that way. It's because it's one of my biggest pet peeves. Um, I love scenery. I hate putting it on MDF. Yeah. Um, I hate cutting it with a saw and then it not looking right and then it's splintering and then if you use like a particle board and it gets wet, um, some people put it on cardboard, some people put it on CDs, if you put it on CDs it kind of scrapes and falls off. So I want it to be all one solid piece and yeah. that's why because then you can just print it and throw it on the board. You're not going to knock anything off because it's solid. Well, and then look at the texturing on these rocks. It's, I mean the texture there looks great. So obviously you've learned as you've gone um, through some of these different models from from your earlier stages up to now when you painted this tell us a little bit about how you painted this did you have to sand it down or how much work was it before you put paint on there so one of the things that i don't like to do is spend a whole lot of extra time painting things um from a gaming point you got to get it on the table kind of as quickly as you can so i wanted it to be designed that way so how i painted it was i primed it with just black primer i got out a really big brush which i'm going to show you later and I attacked it with a really big brush and some dollar Michael paints. So really um, inexpensive paints and just a couple layers of paint. There's yep. no sanding. There's paint. no sanding. I put sand on the bottom for texture. Sure, yeah, um, you added some sand just yep. because. Yeah, and I added right. some snow flock too. It's just model but that's, train that, snow flock. That's the same as painting any model would have been anyway. Yep. So this is just you basing the model. But exactly. in terms of prep work, I didn't it came, do any. Off, came off the printer ready. Yep. I did not. That's you can do it, like you can sand it down if you'd like to, if you'd like to get rid of some of the lines more so, but really just well, a couple coats of paint. And... So, yeah, so maybe if it, oh, I'm sorry. So, well, yeah, yeah, they're a little resilient too, as you can see, I just oh, yeah. dropped one and it's fine. You can glue that down for game terms, but that one's just yep. right off the printer. So if we take a look at some of these coming just off of the printer right now, I mean, if you look really, really close at the texture here, you can see some of the lines on that, but you just painted over that and the lines disappeared. Yeah. That's yep, great. That's that's great. And then I've got two of my smaller forts as well, just up front. Yep. So, so that you can these see. are in the Kickstarter. These are part of the uh, part of the offer that's online right now. And you can see the brick detail on there. The rocks are smooth. This is really, really good work, which means in uh, STL file terms, that means lots of polygons. Is that what that means? That's exactly what that means, yeah. yeah. And printed at a, a decent resolution, right. which okay. I printed on just a stock printer. Okay. And this is the Ender 3. That was Ender, all, all those pieces were off the Ender 3, except for the final painted one. That one I scaled up a little larger, so it's off a CR-10. A CR-10, okay. Now, and we're in Ontario, Canada, so we think in Canadian dollars, at just same as the Kickstarter. So in Canadian dollars, the Ender 3 cost you how much? Uh, Ender 3, if you get it brand new, is about $300. Okay. Uh, you can find a used one, though. The one that I actually printed everything Even still, on. that's not a bad price. Yeah, the one that I printed on was actually a used one that I found just on a, a forum. And uh, yeah. So then the CR10. CR10 is a little bit more. CR10 has got a little bigger uh, build area. Uh, CR10 is about $700. Okay. Yeah. So, so 300 to $700. When I first started looking at 3D printing, it scared me away because a good printer was about two, 3000 Yeah. But it's not like that at all. Yeah. Anymore. And you know what? The good printers are still, 
that much or okay. more. It can even be five, six, seven thousand. Sure, but it that's like commercial grade printing. Yeah, if, and if you're talking about for home use, for game use, this looks great. And you've got others that came off your Ender Three. Yep. We should uh, maybe we can feather some pictures in on that, or we can go yep, back sure. to the other table again. Yep. But I love that the big beautiful table we looked at a moment ago. A lot of that came off the Ender Three. So obviously yep. that three hundred dollar printer is pulling its weight. Yeah, and if you think about it the other way, you can get almost three Ender Threes for the same price as a CR Ten. Sure. So why not have three of them building scenery that much faster? Sure. That's a good thought. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. So then when you print, put all this stuff together, we should take a look at a couple of print files, and we'll uh, at. Uh, let me try that again. Um, no idea what I'm trying to say. <laughs> take a look at some printers. Yeah. You want to see some printers? I can well, show you how to do that. About, so let's let's take a look at the printers. Let's take a look at the resin because you get this resin on reels. So take yeah. a look at what do you actually need to print. You need the file. You need the printer. You need the resin. And you need some paints, but that's up to the craftsman. Yeah. These ones aren't in resin. These ones are in plastic. PLA. They are? Okay. Yeah. PLA. Resin's a little different. Okay. It's for small models. It comes in a liquid. Super messy, super chemically, uh, really smelly. <laughs> These you ones are in careful. something called PLA, and the ones actually that I have are Eco Tough PLA from Filaments, and they are 100% environmentally friendly, no fumes, no, Very good. no nothing. Very good. Well, let's take a look at that, and we'll come back here in a sec. Okay, just saying, that was cool. And I'm pretty excited. So thanks so much for watching. Tune in into the, the next video. This is a two-part video. When we're back with the next video with Mark Chabot again, what are we going to see? Uh, we are going to actually see Mark comparing and contrasting the two printers that he uses. Uh, getting kind of a walkthrough of how he uses them. Uh, what type of actual cost there is uh, to your material cost to actually produce the terrain. Which is pretty, pretty encouraging. Cool. Um, and then we'll actually get another review of the Kickstarter so far and how successful it has been. Kudos to him. He's doing it's a it's an exciting Kickstarter. It's I think going it really was well. Like Three thousand percent funding. Yeah, it, it was doing well. So, Michael Vannon, thanks so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. This guy was hiding behind the camera the whole time for the rest uh, of that video, you can't but he was see there. Me, but he I'm was there. there. I'm there. And he's there for the next one too. Um, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you soon on Eric and Caledrum. Thanks.